but what motivates you if we talk about, you know, um, I mean, being successful is actually good motivation, but when you have all these challenges to face, what actually keeps you ah, going? I mean, people, people, um, my staff, you know, seeing their enthusiasm, seeing their excitement, um, that gives you a lot of energy. I, I live off that kind of energy, right, when you see. That's one. And then walking on the street, you know, um, I, I, was, I was saying to Audrey earlier, when I walk on the street without my cap, just another, another Indian guy walk, walking down, put on the cap, I become Superman, right? And, <laughs> and suddenly the walk from here to my apartment, which takes five minutes, becomes 20 minutes, because a lot of people are stopping you. But what is great is we seem to have made such a difference. And when you come to a different country like Indonesia and someone stops you, uh, a university student from ITB stopped me just now and on the way and said, you know, wow, I just wrote a dissertation about you. This is amazing. I met you and you inspired me and I want to do this. And I just couldn't stop talking about it. And then further down, there were two ladies who said, I never thought I could go to China. You know, thank you, AirAsia, for allowing me to go to China. Um, and, and one more guy who said, I went to Surabaya to watch QPR play football on AirAsia, watched QPR and came back on AirAsia. Um, so those things make the pain, and believe me, there is a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. I can't remember it, but nothing comes easy. But uh, when you see what you've done, it makes it worth it. When you see how you've transformed people's lives, both within the company, when you have boys who are carrying bags for us, mm -hmm. who are now captains, you know, uh, a stewardess who became Miss Thailand, who's about to become captain, that's fairly motivational. And then when you see how you've affected people's lives, you know, it, it, it's a good feeling. It keeps you going. Mm. But I think to say to someone, I own an airline, is a great statement. And when you see me running around in a t-shirt and a cap, you know, generating four, five hundred million of profits, you think, well, if that guy can do it, then okay. I can. Okay, four, five hundred million profits. Okay, and you started off with two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But how did you actually manage to grow the brand? Because obviously, you know, uh, it's not one, it's not easy. Two, if there are big players, like mm -hmm. in your case, mm -hmm. the Malaysian Airlines or the, the National Airlines, how did you manage to. I think two things. One, no one took it seriously. Yeah. And by the time they took us seriously, we were too big. Um, so that was an advantage. I think that was an advantage. People, really. I mean, let's be real. You see a guy you've never seen before come from with the music, cap. with cap, <laughs> come from the music business. He's got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm MAS. Are you really going to make a dent in my life? Ignore the guy. He'll be out of business in six mm -hmm. months. That was one. Uh, two, I think people like the underdog. People like the challenger brand. And we were very brand conscious. You know, I wore my cap everywhere because we had no money. So my guy said, if they take a so photo of you. So it's good to use yeah. a, a cap to so, ask for money. No, well. no, no, <laughs> just the air ranger there. Okay. But that would have been a good point as well. We did things like sponsor Manchester United, you know, a small little brand with seven planes. <clears throat> we sponsored the biggest football club in the world. Yeah. Painful for me because I hate that football club. But <laughs> oh, you're a you, Queen's Park you, Rangers guy. <laughs> you got to be a, you got to be a prostitute once in a while. <laughs> um, and uh, you know we did things that invariably you wouldn't have imagined a, an Asian company to do, especially of our size, and that built our brand. No one understands branding in Asia. I really, you know, it's beginning to. People think it's a waste of money because you put in a million bucks into Manchester United and you don't get the return straight away. But branding is an evolution. We could not have gone from 250,000 passengers a year to 33 million without what we did on branding. But now there are many budget carriers and probably also inspired by uh, mm. your presence. And how do you mm. stay ahead well, of the competition? Well, I, I think number one, our Kentucky Fried Chicken secret is low cost. There's nothing nothing secretive about that. We've got to be the lowest cost, which equals lowest fares. And then um, we think we, div we give a good product. We have a very good safety record. We have a, a brand new fleet. We have great staff. Mm -hmm. our, our cabin crew, in my opinion, are as good as anyone else in the world. Uh, we have fantastic frequency. We do crazy things. Like, we, we don't have food prepared by a French chef. Mm -hmm. We give them people food they want. 
um, you know, we started Nasi Lama and Nasi Padang. You don't, wouldn't think about getting that on the plane. But actually, that's what people want. They don't need some French mm -hmm. food prepared in Paris. So we made flying real, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. But how do you keep cost low and make a ah. profit? I mean, you have to obviously, you know, I mean, that's that for most airlines, that's where they make their profits. They charge a premium. And then yeah. that's what well, we, we're, we're a Walmart. We, we, we go in volume. Um, our cost structure, there are certain things we can't be different from anyone else. We have high maintenance costs. We have brand new planes. We pay the same oil as everyone else. But how we use the plane um, is different. Uh, we, uh, we use it much more per day, but short flights. Uh, we um, have a simple product. We don't have first class, business class, premium economy, economy, it, it's straightforward. We have one type of plane, which means our pilots and our cabin crew can fly and everything. So high efficiency. So you know, in your mind, you're thinking, well, they must be cutting costs somewhere to be, you know, and in mm -hmm. your mind, I can read your mind, you're thinking about safety and maintenance, et cetera. Those are things we can't compromise on because that's the end of our brand because everyone automatically thinks you're not safe. Um, but if you compare us with this SIA, the efficiencies we garner are massive because of the simplicity of the product. And the fact that we can go into markets they never dreamt of because we have a low cost and we can offer fares in a market like Aceh to go internationally. That's our real secret, that we can go into any market and create a route because our cost structure is low. And as we get more and more volume, mm -hmm. our cost gets lower and lower. So it's kind of self-perpetuating. Thank you.